And it's called Chat GPT. Type in a request and it can write legal documents, software, even school essays. People are predicting it will wipe out whole industry. The company that makes ChatGPT, OpenAI, was co-founded by Elon Musk and is now primarily backed by Microsoft. The AI analysts say it's as revolutionary as the internet, but some say it's a threat to society. But one thing is for sure, it's sparking interest among everyone from top CEOs to students. So ChatGPT hasn't been without its controversy, but as a tool, can we use it to learn more about Excel functions and formulae? And can we use it to help us write macros? Well, let's have a look. Okay, to get access to ChatGPT, you'll need to go to a website, which is openai.com. Once you're on that website, then if you scroll down uh, just to the bottom left of the screen here, where it says ChatGPT, then you come through to this page here and you just need to try ChatGPT. Okay, for our first example, we're gonna keep it quite uh, nice and easy for ChatGPT. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask it to sum the sales and to populate it into cell E11, to sum the profit, populate that into F11, and then to do a calculation. Uh, and I've just specified the profit percentage, so it'll be interesting to see whether ChatGPT knows that profit percentage is effectively profit divided by sales. So if I go up to my top left here, I'm just gonna copy my prompts copy that go across to chat GPT you enter your data down below here in this text box so we just paste that in and hit return let's see what it comes back with so see I think the good thing about what chat GBT is is that it actually just talks through or just creates dialogue for each of the answers that it gives and gives a little bit of a rationale which I think is really really useful so for this instance, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of the response, copy that, and we're going to drop that into Excel here. Uh, it looks right um, overall. So if I go in and take this one, so this is my first answer here. So this is summing the sales, drop that in. That looks right. If I just sum my sales there, 2793. And uh, the next one down then is just summing the profit. So again, that one looks like it's, yeah, that looks like it's right. And then the third one, which is quite good actually, is that I didn't specify how to get profit percentage, but it appears to give me the correct answer um, overall. Okay, for our next example, we're gonna make uh, ChatGPT work a little bit harder for its money. So what I want to do is I've got a store name here. So I've got the Bangkok store. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find the store number. So this is a regular kind of uh, challenge that you would have if you're working in Excel. Now, because the store number is to the left of the store name, we can't use VLOOKUP. So effectively, we should be looking in ChatGPT, should be looking at either an XLOOKUP or an index match. So if I copy my prompts, which I've told it over here, and just drop that into the dialog box again, paste that in and hit return. And let's see what chat GPT comes back with. Come on. A few moments later. Okay, so we can see actually it's given us a V lookup, which is not correct. What we're gonna do is we're gonna give chat GPT that feedback correct. and hit return. Now it's actually come back and it looks like it's giving me the correct answer. So it's giving me index and match. Uh, but interesting this time, it hasn't actually given me any kind of dialogue with uh, how that formula works. So it just gives me a little bit more details, but I thought it would have given me the answer um, up above here. Okay, so it's giving me a full breakdown of how the index match combination formula works. Um, but I had to actually prompt it to give me that, uh, which was a little bit disappointing, uh, to be honest. So what I'm going to do is, I'm um, firstly, I'm just going to take uh, the answer from here, just to see if it works. Copy that, flip it back, and just paste that in there. And 992653. So that looks like it's given us the correct answer, albeit it did give us the incorrect answer in the first case. Okay, for our next example, uh, we're going to again make it a, a little bit more complicated again. 
So in this scenario, what I want ChatGPT to do is to give me back the sales, but I want to sum the sales for two different criteria. One being for a big store size, which is in this column here. And the next one is North America, which is in column B here. So I want all the North American stores to have a store size of big. So effectively, it should be creating a sum if, sum ifs formula. So here is my uh, criteria over here where I'm saying actually what I want. I'm just gonna copy that and we're gonna paste that into chat GPT, see what it gives us back. Hit return. Okay, so this time it appears to have uh, gotten the answer right, although we'll paste that in and have a look. And it's given us a nice little summary of how the sum ifs work, basically summing if based on, on two criteria. So it seems to have done a better job than it did for the VLOOKUP. Well, let's uh, paste all of our answer here. Let's put that back into Excel here, hit return. And I want to just take this formula here, copy that, paste that in here. Okay, so that's given us 1394. So we just check that. So the big stores in North America, which I think is these two stores here, 1394. So it appears to have gotten that one right uh, anyway. Okay, for our next example, I'm gonna ask Chat GPT to write a dynamic formula. So what I want to do is I want to sum the sales within column B uh, for a year to date calculation. But what I want to specify is at week which week in the year today I want to sum if. So as an example, if I said that week here was five, I would want to add up the first five week sales and get 500. But if this was specified to be two, I would only want it to add up the first two weeks overall. I've got a video um, on how you can complete this task using XLOOKUP, uh, and that's going to be at the top of the video now. Otherwise, let's just copy this in and let's see what chat GPT makes of this. Okay, so chat GPT has effectively used a sum if, and it's basically saying if the sum of A4 to A15 is greater than E4. So let's just paste this in so we can see if that works. Okay, so it's given us 200, that looks right. And if we change that to six, that will get to 600. So how this formula is working is it effectively is looking at the weak numbers. And is it saying that if it is less than or equal to what's specified in here, then you would effectively sum it up. So that looks to be a good formula actually. So it's a good way of approaching that. Okay, next we're gonna get chat GPT to write a macro for us. But there's two things we need to do before. Firstly, we need to make sure that this workbook is a macro enabled workbook. So to do that, we'll go up to file, save a copy, and then in the drop down, down here, you just need to make sure that you save it as macro enabled workbook. And we've already done that. And then secondly, we need to make sure that the, the developer tab is activated. So the developer tab is where we will go in and paste our VBA, which is our programming language within Excel, where we're gonna paste in our language. So to enable that, you just need to go to File, go down to Options, and then go to Customize Ribbon, and then just make sure that the Developer tab here on the right-hand side is ticked. So hit OK to that. So this is the data that we're gonna run our macro on. So it's just some store standing data, which just has store numbers, store size, store name, etc., and then a sales and a profit. And what we want the macro to do is to sum the sales and the profit, but we wanted to do that dy dynamically. So where if there's um, different lengths of data, it will automatically calculate uh, the last row and add up correctly. Then we want to just sort our data. And then finally, we want to put in some formatting just to make it look uh, a little bit nicer. But we've already copied uh, this data, this prompt uh, over into ChatGBT. So I'll paste it in here and it's come out with this uh, macro here. What it does quite useful is it just comments just up above the lines of code of exactly what it's doing. So here we can see it's finding the end of the data range. It's declaring a, a variable called last row. Then it's sorting by region and store size. It's summing of 
summing our sales and our profit. It's uh, formatting the subtotals and then it's going and it's uh, formatting our uh, headings as well. So if I copy that, so what I'm going to do is go up to developer tab and then go across to visual basic and I'm going to insert a module. So a module is just a blank canvas where we're going to enter in our code. So paste that in for the moment and then we're just going to exit out of these two screens uh, and to run our macro we'll go developer macro and you can see then our macro uh, sum and sort is within here so if i hit run to that you can see what it's done then is it's sorted by region and then by store size uh, it's put in a sum for my sales and my profit uh, it's done a couple of odd things though it's, it seems to have added in an extra kind of format here and i specified that i wanted it in navy whereas this looks like it's in black so i'm not too sure what's going on there um but what we can do one of the things i'm quite eager to look at is whether this sum here at the end is dynamic so if i go to the next sheet what i've done is i've just doubled up the uh, size of the data again so if i go to my developer tab my macro and if I run my data there, actually you can see my sum totals are actually down where I need them to be overall. So hmm, it's kind of worked to some degree. The formatting probably isn't exactly how I wanted it, especially with this bit in the side, but um, good enough. So overall, ChatGPT looks like it's a pretty useful tool. It did make a couple of mistakes, however, so you do really need to be careful about the data that you use coming out of it. But overall, I think it can be quite a powerful tool going forward. What do you think? Let me know in the comments whether you currently use it or you plan to use it in the future. If you like that video, please hit like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.